Quarantine Zone Breakout, generated by StoryWave.ai. Smash that like button and subscribe for more. Leave a story idea in the comments below so we can create it for you. Chapter 1. Outbreak. The Carter household had been a sanctuary of normalcy on a quiet Philadelphia street. But as the sun dipped below the skyline, an eerie dissonance took hold. Elijah, attired in his favorite Phillies cap, sat frozen as the evening news cascaded into their living room. Beside him, Mara, her fingers clasped around a family locket, mirrored his disbelief. The screen flashed with scenes of havoc, sirens blaring in the background, as reporters spoke of a new narcotic that twisted its victims into something grotesque, something inhuman. Eli's deep voice finally broke the silence. Mara, this can't be real, can it? People turning into, what did they call them? With a soothing tone that belied her inner turmoil, Mara replied, they're calling them the afflicted, Eli. But it doesn't matter what they're named. We need to focus on what we're going to do. Their children, Kara and Alex, had been glued to their own devices until the escalating panic pierced their bubble. Kara, her light brown hair pulled back, revealing the shine of her braces, tried to make sense of the commotion. Mom, Dad, should we be scared? because I'm really starting to freak out here. Eli looked at his daughter, his green eyes a mirror of her own. Scared is okay, Kara, but we're going to get through this. We're going to stay safe. As they spoke, a commotion outside drew their collective gaze. A neighbor, Mr. Thompson, was staggering down the street, his movements erratic, his groans chilling the night air. Suddenly, he lunged at a passerby and the Carters witnessed the first grim attack. It was a horrid spectacle that cemented the grim reality of their situation. Alex, the youngest, holding his handheld game console loosely by his side, began to cough, a harsh, dry sound that had been worsening over the past few days. His dirty blonde hair was matted against his forehead, a sign of the fever he'd been fighting. I don't feel so good, he mumbled, his voice cracking. Kara moved toward her brother, her adventurous spirit eclipsed by concern. Al, you've been coughing a lot. Maybe mom should, but Mara was already at his side, her nurse's instincts taking over. Let's not panic, but we'll keep an eye on that cough. Okay, sweetie? As the night progressed, the Carters worked with a single-minded purpose, fortifying their home against the encroaching chaos. Boards hammered over windows, furniture pushed against doors, their suburban dwelling transformed into a stronghold. Through the long hours, their conversation never ceased. Eli and Mara debated the best course of action, while Kara and Alex exchanged stories to distract from the fear. Every word was an earnest to their bond, their determination to hold on to the life they knew, even as it unraveled around them. Just as dawn began to break, their preparations halted. They stood together, a family united, in the silent agreement that their home was now their cage. But as the light of day grew stronger, so did their resolve. The Carters were trapped, but they were far from defeated. With the city in turmoil and an ominous cough from Alex lingering in the air, their journey had only just begun. And in the days to follow, they would discover just how much they'd need to sacrifice to escape the quarantine zone that Philadelphia had become. Chapter two, fortifying the fortress. In the heart of Philadelphia, the Carter residence stood as a lighthouse of steadfastness amidst the growing turmoil. Elijah, with his cap shadowing his brow, led the charge, scavenging planks and nails from the garden shed. The once vibrant backyard, a place of family barbecues and laughter, had transformed into a source of their salvation. Mara, her locket catching the afternoon light, sorted through the medical supplies in the living room. She methodically checked each item, ensuring their makeshift infirmary was stocked and ready. Her blue eyes reflected a mix of determination and concern as she moved with purpose, her nurse training shining through. Kara, her green eyes fierce, approached her parents with an urgency that matched the pounding of her heart. We can't just sit here boarding up windows. We need to think about getting out, finding a safer place. We're sitting ducks. Elijah set down his hammer, turning to face her. Kara, we have to protect ourselves first. We don't know what's out there. This is our home. We make our stand here. But dad, it's like we're sealing our own tomb. Shouldn't we at least try to, Mara interjected, her voice steady. Kara, your father's right. We need a fortress before we can think about escape. We're safe here for now. 
Alex, his fever now waned, but the cough persisting, watched the exchange, his blue eyes wide. He clung to his video game, a vestige of normalcy in his grasp. He spoke up, his voice small but clear. Can't we just stick together, no matter what? The family gathered, a circle of unity in the chaos for their first official meeting. Elijah laid out the rules, ration the food, keep noise to a minimum, and never go outside alone. Each family member nodded in agreement, though the strain of their new reality was evident in the tightness of their shoulders and the worry lines etched on their faces. Kara wasn't satisfied, her adventurous spirit chafing against the restrictions. We need to be proactive, not just reactive. What if we run out of food, or what if we'll cross that bridge when we get to it? Elijah assured her, his deep voice a balm to the rising tension. As the day waned into evening, the fortified home stood silent, the windows dark. Inside, the Carters settled in their new roles, the confines of their shelter pressing in around them. Yet, even as the walls closed in, their resolve grew, a shared understanding that survival was a family affair. And while Kara's restlessness simmered beneath the surface, the Carters knew that their strength lay in their unity, in the fortress they had built together. Chapter 3 dwindling supplies. The Carter family's kitchen, once a hub of warmth and delicious smells, now bore the starkness of scarcity. Canned foods lined the counters in dwindling rows, each label a reminder of the reality they faced. The tap dripped the last of their water reserve as Elijah, his cap slightly askew, tallied the remains of their provisions. We've got maybe a week's worth of food left if we're careful, he said, his voice low, the weight of leadership etched in his furrowed brow. Mara, her locket glinting against her chest, scanned the inventory with a critical eye. Water's the bigger concern. We need a plan before we run dry. Kara, her restless energy palpable, slammed a fist down on the table. We should have left days ago. We can't just wait here to starve. Eli's gaze met his daughter's, his own resolve hardening. Going out there isn't a simple jaunt, Kara. It's dangerous. We've seen what's happened to others. Alex, his hand held forgotten beside him, coughed into his sleeve, the sound a stark interruption. The room fell silent, all eyes on the youngest Carter. Maybe, maybe I can help somehow, he offered, his once shy demeanor taking on a hint of bravery. The family huddled, their murmurs a mixture of strategy and fear. They debated roots and risks, the consequences of action versus inaction. As they spoke, a shadow loomed outside, a grotesque figure shambling past the barricaded window. Mara's breath caught in her throat. That was too close. We can't delay any longer. Eli nodded, the decision hanging like a guillotine above their heads. We need to find a place with supplies. Somewhere secure. We'll need weapons, a clear path. Kara's voice rose, her frustration breaking through. And what if we get trapped out there, Dad? What then? We become one of them. Her words hung heavy in the air, the chilling possibility no one dared to voice. The family's debate grew heated, each member grappling with the perilous unknown that awaited them outside their makeshift fortress. The chapter concluded with the Carters unified in their resolve to venture beyond their walls, their home no longer a sanctuary, but a cell. Their necessity to escape, to seek sustenance and safety, had become as vital as the air they breathed. With each heartbeat, they understood that to survive, they must face the horrors beyond their door. The realization of the need to escape was palpable, a silent pact forged between them as they prepared to step into the unknown. Chapter 4. First Foray. The once bustling streets of Philadelphia were now a ghostly echo of their former selves. It was within this eerie silence that Elijah, adjusting his baseball cap against the cold bite of the wind, and Mara, with her locket tucked beneath her jacket, made their cautious approach to the local pharmacy. Eli surveyed the street corners with a practiced eye. Remember, we need to be quick. In and out, no dawdling. Mara nodded, her nurse instincts kicking in as she spotted the familiar Red Cross sign, now smeared with grime. I'll grab the medicines, you keep watch. We can't afford any surprises. Their communication was seamless, a testimony to years of shared hardships and triumphs. As they neared the entrance, a sudden guttural moan sliced through the air. A horde of the afflicted stumbled into view, their movements erratic, a grotesque parody of life. Eli's heart pounded against his ribs, but his voice remained steady. Back up slowly. 
We don't want to draw their attention. Mara's blue eyes were wide with fear, yet her response was measured. There's a back entrance. We might still have a chance. Stealthily, they circumvented the building, avoiding the broken glass and debris that littered the ground. Inside the pharmacy, the shelves were a jumble of toppled products and scattered pills. Mara's hands shook as she filled her bag with antibiotics and bandages, each item a lifeline. Eli kept a vigilant watch at the door, his every sense attuned to the sounds of danger. He whispered, we should move. We've got enough to last us a while. As they retraced their steps, a cry for help stopped them in their tracks. A stranger, injured and desperate, lay in their path. Mara's compassionate heart couldn't leave him behind. Eli, he's hurt. I have to do something. Eli's green eyes met hers, conflict and duty warring within him. Mara, we can't risk it. We have the kids to think about. Mara's hands were already at work, her medical expertise shining as she assessed the man's wounds. I can't turn my back on him. This is what I do, Eli. This is who I am. Their exchange was fraught with the gravity of their situation. To help another was to invite risk, yet to ignore a life in need was to abandon their humanity. As they stabilized the stranger, the distant moans of the horde grew louder, a reminder of the ever-present threat. They needed to move, and fast. The family debate echoed in their minds. They were no longer simply scavengers, but potential saviors in a world gone mad. Their return home was fraught with tension, the stranger a silent figure between them. They had ventured out seeking supplies, but they brought back far more than they had bargained for. The question of who to save and who to leave behind weighed heavily on their hearts as they slipped back into the shadowed safety of their home. The world outside was indeed more dangerous than they had imagined, and their first foray into the wasteland had changed them in ways they were only beginning to understand. Chapter 5. Under Siege The night had fallen over the once vibrant neighborhood, now a shadow-laden maze of silence and dread. Inside the Carter household, the family huddled, a collective breath held as the unmistakable sound of shuffling feet approached. Elijah, his cap now stained with the grime of survival, peered through a crack in the boarded window, a low curse escaping his lips. They're here. More than before, he uttered, the grim news hanging in the air like a thick fog. Mara, her locket pressed against her chest, turned from the window, her expression taut with resolve. Kids, upstairs, now! Barricade the door with me. Kara's hands trembled as she grabbed a nearby chair, thrusting it under the doorknob of the upstairs room. What do we do if they get in, Mom? Mara's voice was firm as she pulled Kara into a quick embrace. We don't let them. We fight. Below, Elijah was pushing the couch against the front door the wood creaking under the strain. Alex, his face pale and his breath shallow, stumbled to help but doubled over in a fit of coughing that cut through the silence. Eli's eyes flicked to his son, worry creasing his forehead. Alex, you need to rest. This cough's getting worse. Alex shook his head, stubbornness etched into his young features. No, I can help. I need to. Suddenly, a window shattered downstairs, the sound a sharp explosion in the quiet night. With the breach, the groans of the undead grew louder, more insistent. Flames licked the edge of the broken window frame, the result of a knocked-over candle in the chaos. Eli leapt into action, his voice rising above the din. Water! We need to put out that fire before it spreads. Kara descended the stairs two at a time, her previous fear now replaced by adrenaline. She grabbed a bucket, her movements quick and precise as she doused the nascent flames. The heat was intense, a fierce counterpoint to the cold sweat on her brow. Through the tumult, a heart-wrenching crack sounded as the front door began to give way. The family rallied, their hands and bodies a barricade of flesh and bone against the encroaching horde. Mara looked to Elijah, her words barely audible over the chaos. We can't hold them. We need to get out, find somewhere safe. Eli nodded, his agreement a silent vow between them. We'll make for the car. It's our only chance. As they prepared to flee, a figure among the undead stumbled through the broken doorway, its face a mask of decay. Alex, his eyes wide with fear, was the first to react, pushing the creature back with a strength that belied his illness. The night turned to a blur of motion and terror, the family fighting as one. But amidst the struggle, tragedy struck. A beloved family member, caught in a moment of heroism, fell to the horde. 
their sacrifice a stark reminder of the stakes. The Carters, their hearts heavy with loss, manage to break free from the clutches of the undead, the night air a cold slap against their tear-streaked faces. As they fled to the relative safety of their car, the burning house a lantern of their desperation, it was clear that Alex's condition was no longer something they could ignore. The harsh cough, the feverish skin his illness demanded attention. The realization that their home, their fortress, was now ash and memories solidified the truth they had been avoiding. There was no safety behind walls. Survival meant moving, fighting, living. The need to escape had never been more dire, and as they drove into the dark unknown, the Carters understood that the world ahead was as unforgiving as the one they left behind. Chapter 6. Plan of Escape Huddled around a tattered map in the flickering glow of the dashboard light, the Carter family felt the weight of every decision upon their shoulders. Elijah's hands, steady despite the tremors of uncertainty, traced routes that snaked beyond the city's chaos. We need to be smart about this. If we take the highway, we risk running into more hordes, but the back roads might not be clear, he said, his voice a soft rumble in the cramped car. Mara, her gaze fixed on the map, measured each potential path with a critical eye. We can't afford to get trapped. The highway will be a nightmare, but there might be other survivors taking the back roads. Kara, her eyes scanning the map, chimed in with a tone that cut through the tension. What about going through the woods? It could be safer, and we could avoid the main roads altogether. Elijah considered this, his deep-set eyes showing the first flicker of hope. It's less direct, but you might be onto something, Kara. Alex, wrapped in a blanket in the back seat, his cough now a constant undertone to their discussions, squinted at the map. But what if we get lost in the woods? We don't know what's out there. His father turned to him, his face softened by the dim light. We'll use the stars, Al. Remember when I taught you how to find the North Star? Alex nodded, a small smile cracking his worry. Yeah, I remember, Dad. As they discussed, Mara started gathering what few weapons they had managed to salvage a baseball bat, a couple of kitchen knives, and a crowbar. She laid them out with precision, each a silent sentinel in their fight for survival. Kara, her hands deftly moving through their meager supplies, began to pack a bag with essentials, water, a first aid kit, and as much non-perishable food as would fit. We can't take much, but we have to make sure we have enough to last us until we find somewhere safe. Elijah watched his daughter, pride mingling with the dread of the unknown. You've got a good head on your shoulders, Kara. We'll make it with you helping to plan. The family's deliberations continued, the map a canvas of their fears and hopes. Each route was debated, each landmark a potential safe haven or a new nightmare. In the confines of the vehicle, they became cartographers, charting a course through a transformed world, their unity both their compass and anchor. As dawn approached, the Carters had a plan, albeit one fraught with uncertainty. They would take the woods, relying on their wits and the stars to guide them, it was a risk, but the city had become a cage, and the need to break free was undeniable. They would set out at nightfall, under the cover of darkness, their first tentative steps towards a new sanctuary. The plan was set, but the road ahead promised no favors. Every choice was a gamble, the stakes, their very lives. Yet as they prepared to navigate the treacherous terrain, the Carters knew one thing for certain, they had each other. And together, they would attempt the harrowing journey toward hope. Chapter 7. False Starts The Carters, under a canvas of stars obscured by the creeping fog of the city's outskirts, found themselves at a crossroads. Elijah, with his cap pulled low, scanned the shadows where danger lurked. They had encountered another group of survivors, faces drawn and wary, their intentions unclear. Look, we just need to pass through. We mean you no harm, Elijah said, his hands open and empty to show their peaceful intent. The leader of the other group, a burly man with a scar running down his cheek, grunted in response. Passing through ain't free. Everything's got a price now. Mara, her fingers instinctively curling around her locket, stepped forward. We don't want trouble. We can offer medical aid. I was a nurse. I can help your people. The man's eyes flickered with interest, but his stance remained guarded. Fine. Fix up my boy here, and we'll talk. As Mara set to work, Kara watched her impatience a living thing. 
The fire in her eyes spoke of her desire to push forward, to escape the confines of their crumbling city. Why are we bargaining? We don't have time for this, Kara hissed under her breath. Alex, still wrapped tightly in his blanket, coughed a sound of agreement, his condition a timer counting down their safety. The negotiations were tense, the air thick with unspoken threats. Eventually, a deal was struck, a treacherous bargain that would allow the Carter's passage. But as they began to move, the other group reneged, their greed outweighing their word. A scuffle broke out, the night erupting into chaos. Kara, acting on impulse, darted forward, her recklessness nearly costing her dearly as she narrowly avoided the swing of a makeshift weapon. Kara, no, Elijah bellowed, pulling her back just in time. We have to go, now! The retreat was frantic, the Carters fleeing back to the charred remnants of their home, the betrayal a bitter pill that soured the air. They arrived breathless, the cold realization settling in their bones they were no safer now than when they had left. As they caught their breath in the cover of their once safe haven, the reality of their situation was stark. Their first attempt at escape had failed, and they were worse off for it. Trust gets you killed? The burly man's voice echoed in Elijah's mind, a grim lesson learned too late. Kara's face, once flush with the thrill of action, was now drawn with the gravity of her near miss. The consequences of her actions were a sharp reminder of the razor's edge they walked. The family gathered in the ruins, their bond tested but unbroken. They had faced betrayal and survived, but the road ahead was no less daunting. They would need to regroup, to plan, and to find the courage to try again. Their escape was not a question of if, but when and they would not be deterred by false starts or treacherous dealings. The Carters were down, but they were not out, and with the dawn, they would begin anew. Chapter 8. Unlikely Alliances Amidst the desolation of their ravaged city, the Carter family and the stranger Mara had aided discovered a shared goal, survival. Seated around a dimly lit room in an abandoned building that offered temporary shelter, they exchanged wary glances. Elijah, his cap now more gray than red, broke the palpable silence. We don't know much about you, but Mara saved your life. That counts for something, Elijah began, his voice steady but cautious. The stranger, a wiry man with eyes that had seen too much, nodded slowly. Name's Rick. I got skills that might be useful to you, skills from my time in the army. Mara watched Rick carefully, her instincts as a nurse kicking in, searching for sincerity. We're trying to get out of the city, find somewhere safe. Maybe you know a way? Rick leaned back, the ghost of a smile flickering across his face. Yeah, I might know a thing or two about sneaking around those things out there. Kara, her energy a contrast to the room's stillness, leaned forward. What kind of skills? Because we need all the help we can get if we're going to make it out alive. Rick's smile broadened. Let's just say I can teach you how to move without drawing attention. It's all about understanding how they behave. Elijah and Mara exchanged a look, the prospect of gaining valuable knowledge sparking a flame of hope in the dim room. They agreed to an exchange, Rick's survival skills, for a share of their dwindling supplies. Over the next few hours, Rick demonstrated techniques for moving silently, using shadows to their advantage, and creating simple but effective distractions. The Carters absorbed every lesson, their minds sharp with the desire to live, to escape the nightmare their world had become. As they practiced, Alex's cough punctuated the air, a stark reminder of the fragility of their situation. Rick paused, concern creasing his brow. The kid needs medicine, and soon. Mara, her medical expertise on full alert, replied, We're running low on antibiotics. We need to find more, but it's risky. Elijah, his protective nature at the forefront, made a decision. We'll risk it. Alex's life depends on it. The Alliance, though born of necessity, grew stronger as they shared their resources and knowledge. Rick revealed a hidden stash of canned food, while Kara showed him how to purify water using the supplies they had. The night grew deep, and the group settled into an uneasy rest, taking turns keeping watch. In the quiet moments, Elijah whispered to Mara, This is good, right? Having Rick with us? Mara, her eyes reflecting the flickering candlelight, nodded. It's a chance, Eli. That's more than we had yesterday. Their conversation was a low hum, a thread of connection in the vast tapestry of uncertainty. The Carters, with their new ally, had begun to forge a path forward, not just as survivors, 
but as a united front against the terrors that awaited them outside the fragile safety of their makeshift hideout. Chapter 9. Raid on the Pharmacy The night cloaked the city in a blanket of false tranquility as the Carters, along with their new ally, Rick, crouched behind the ruins of abandoned cars outside the pharmacy. The air was thick with the stench of decay, and the distant groans of the undead served as a grim reminder of their mission to secure medication for Alex, whose ragged coughs grew steadily worse. Elijah, his cap shadowed under the moonlight, peered through a pair of binoculars, his green eyes scanning for movement, the front swarming with them. We'll have to find another way in. Rick, his posture relaxed yet alert, pointed toward the alleyway. Side door. It's our best bet. Mara, her locket now hidden beneath her shirt, clutched her medical bag close. We don't have much time. Every second counts. Kara, her light brown hair tied back, nodded in agreement. A baseball bat gripped firmly in her hands, she whispered, let's do this. They moved as a unit, their footsteps soft against the cracked pavement. As they neared the side entrance, an errant can clattered across the concrete, the sound piercing the silence like a gunshot. In an instant, the shuffling figures turned, their hollow eyes reflecting the pale moonlight as they stumbled toward the noise. Crud, Kara muttered, her grip tightening on the bat. Elijah grabbed a rock and hurled it in the opposite direction, hoping to distract the horde. Now's our chance, move. They slipped inside, the pharmacy a cavern of toppled shelves and strewn medication. Mara dashed to the antibiotics, her hands moving with precision as she searched for the specific drugs Alex needed. The groans grew louder, a symphony of hunger as the undead pressed against the frail door. Rick stood ready, a crowbar in hand. Won't hold long. Hurry it up. Kara stood back to back with Rick, her own weapon raised. We can take them. Just need a little more time. Elijah joined the defensive line, his own resolve set in stone. Mara, anything? Yes, got it, she called out, securing the precious vials into her bag. The door bucked and groaned under the weight of the pressing bodies. With a resounding crack, it gave way, and the creatures poured in like floodwaters through a broken dam. The ensuing battle was a blur of motion. Rick swung his crowbar with deadly accuracy. Each hit a grim necessity. Kara's bat connected with a sickening thud, her fear transformed into fierce determination. Elijah, though outnumbered, fought with the ferocity of a man protecting his family, his every move a dance with death itself. As the last of the creatures fell, the pharmacy was silent once more, save for the heavy breathing of the living. They had done it. The medication was theirs, but the victory was steeped in the grim reality of their daily fight for survival. As they made their way back, Rick spoke up a hint of admiration in his voice. You folks are something else. There's a community of survivors not too far from here. They could use people like you. Elijah considered Rick's words. The idea of a larger group, a glimmer of possibility in the dark. We'll think about it. Right now, we need to get this medicine back to Alex. Together, they navigated the treacherous streets once more, their bonds solidified through the night's ordeal. The raid on the pharmacy was more than a mission. It was a witness to their ability to survive, to adapt, and perhaps to find hope in the most unlikely of places. Chapter 10. Reconnaissance As the first light of morning threaded through the dilapidated buildings of Philadelphia, the Carters and Rick stood overlooking a stretch of the escape route, binoculars in hand. The cold bite of the air did little to deter their focus as they observed the landscape ahead. Eli, with his cap pulled firmly down against the chill, surveyed the scene. That convoy of military trucks could be full of supplies. It's worth a closer look. Mara, her keen eyes scanning the horizon, nodded in agreement. But we have to be careful. If the military left them, that means they were overrun or they left in a hurry. Kara, her grip firm on the binoculars, zoomed in on the vehicles. I can see some crates beside the trucks. Could be ammo or food. Rick, who had taken point, motioned to a nearby building. Best vantage point is from up there. We can see the movement patterns of those things. They crept to the edifice, a skeletal frame of what once might have been an office space. Dust and debris crunched under their careful steps as they ascended the broken stairs. From the top, the scope of their challenge became evident. The undead roamed in erratic patterns, a deadly maze between them and the convoy. 
Eli squinted against the daylight, his voice low. They're not completely mindless. See how they turn at the sound of that falling sign? Mara, her fingers busy with a small notebook, jotted down their observations. It's like they still have some basic instincts, noises, movements, it attracts them. As they strategized their next move, a soft crackle emanated from the backpack beside them. Mara reached in and pulled out a portable radio, its frequency dial glowing faintly. She adjusted the knob and a voice broke through the static. If you can hear this, you are not alone. Coordinates for the safe zone are, the transmission cut off as abruptly as it had started, but hope sparked in Mara's blue eyes. There are others out there. We have to find that safe zone. Eli placed a comforting hand on her shoulder. We will. First, we get what we can from those trucks. Carefully, they plotted their approach using the information they had gleaned. Rick's survival training was invaluable as he mapped out their path with military precision. Kara, ever the brave soul, volunteered to lead. I can do this. I'm quick, and I know how to be quiet. Mara hesitated, the worry clear on her face. Kara, it's dangerous, but necessary, Kara finished for her. I've got this, Mom. With a plan in place, they geared up, distributing the makeshift weapons evenly. Rick passed a sturdy knife to Eli, its blade catching the light. We cover each other, no heroics, Rick instructed, his voice firm. The operation was a tense ballet of stealth and speed. Eli and Rick provided cover while Mara and Kara made a dash for the supplies. Each step was measured, each breath a silent prayer. They reached the convoy and their search was fruitful. Maps, canned goods, even a few bottles of water all tucked away in the abandoned vehicles. As they gathered the intel and supplies, a groan from the horde signaled they had been spotted. The return was a sprint for life, their arms laden with the spoils of their daring raid. They made it back to the building, the door slamming shut just as the first of the creatures reached them. Breathless but intact, they reviewed the maps, the radio transmission still fresh in their minds. The coordinates were a puzzle to be solved, but the chance at a real safe zone was a warning in the darkness. Eli looked over the maps, his eyes tracing routes and landmarks. We've got a new goal. That safe zone could be our ticket out of here. With new resources in hand and the promise of a community of survivors, the Carters felt the stirrings of cautious optimism. The reconnaissance had revealed the perilous nature of their journey, but it had also shown them that opportunities still existed in the ruins of their city. The path ahead was fraught with danger, but the Carters were ready to face it, together. Chapter 11, The Final Stand, Dawn hadn't yet cracked the horizon when the Carters alongside Rick gathered in the gray dawn light, their faces set with determination. They stood in a semicircle amidst the detritus of the once bustling city, a crude collection of handmade traps laid out before them. All right, we've got one shot at this, Elijah began, his voice steady. We need to be silent and swift. Rick, his military background evident in his precise movements, demonstrated how to set the traps. These will buy us time. Let's place them where they'll do the most damage to those walking nightmares. Mara, her nurse's heart heavy with the gravity of their task, interjected, and we need to keep close. If anyone gets bitten, we won't, Kara interrupted, her tone resolute. She tested the weight of a sturdy pipe in her hands, a makeshift weapon for the ordeal ahead. Alex, his pale face tinged with the strain of his persistent cough, watched his family with a mix of fear and awe. I'm ready he said, though his voice betrayed his nerves. The traps were set with care, sharp edges gleaming in the weak light, cans filled with pebbles to create noise, and lines to trip the shambling forms of the undead. With the first trap in place, Elijah turned to the group. Now, for the sewers. It's going to be tight, and it'll stink to high heaven, but it's our best chance to slip past them. The entrance to the sewer system loomed before them, a gaping maw of darkness. Rick led the way, his flashlight cutting a swathe through the black. The walls were slick with moisture, and the air was thick with the smell of decay. Keep your hands to yourselves and your eyes open, Rick cautioned, his voice echoing off the narrow walls. They trudged through the muck, the sound of their progress muffled by the enveloping dark. Kara's hand brushed against the slimy wall, and she fought back a shudder. This is gross, but at least those things are worse, she murmured. 
Mara paused, a pang of sorrow in her chest as she thought of the home they were leaving behind. We've been through so much, she whispered, more to herself than to the others. Elijah heard her and reached out to squeeze her hand. We're going to make it, Mara, for us, for the kids. Their journey was a slow progression, each step a silent testament to their will to survive. They emerged from the sewer grate as the city began to stir, the first gray light touching the ruined skyscrapers. The traps they had set worked as intended. The sounds of clattering cans and tripped wires filled the air, drawing the undead away from their path. With the way clear, the Carters and Rick raced towards the outskirts, the promise of freedom urging them forward. They did not speak. Their breaths came in ragged gasps as the safe zone's coordinates beckoned them onward. Behind them, the city faded into the background, a chapter of their lives closed with pain and struggle. Ahead lay uncertainty, but also the chance for a new beginning, far from the reach of the hordes that had claimed their world. As they crossed the threshold into the unknown, they did not look back. Their final stand was not one of combat, but of courage, the courage to leave behind all they knew in search of a hope that lay just beyond the horizon. Chapter 12, Breach the Perimeter. The Carter's vehicle, a battered sedan with a cracked windshield sped through the desolate streets of a city, gasping its last breaths. Elijah's hands clenched the wheel, each turn and swerve a dance with fate as they fled the relentless pursuit of the undead. Mara, her eyes scanning the rearview mirror, called out, they're gaining on us. Rick, crouched low in the back seat, loaded a pistol with hands that remembered too many battles. Hang tight. As soon as we clear these blocks, we should see the safe zone's barriers. Kara clenched her teeth, the muscles in her arms tense as she braced herself against the door. We can't slow down, Dad. Not even for a second. Alex, his breath shallow, peered out the window, his fever-glazed eyes reflecting the chaos they left in their wake. Is it much farther? I don't know how much longer I can. Elijah glanced at his son, his heart heavy. We're close, son. Hold on. As they neared the safety zone, a sudden crack echoed through the air, and the sound of a bullet whizzing past signaled a new threat. Snipers, positioned atop the high walls of the safety zone, were taking no chances with the approaching vehicle. We're not the enemy, Mara shouted as if the guards could hear her plea. Rick leaned out the window, waving a white cloth. We're alive in here. Don't shoot. Their vehicle skidded around a corner, the safe zone's gates now in sight, a barricade between them and salvation. The sedan came to a screeching halt just short of the entrance, the sound of the engine dying as they spilled out, hands raised. A voice boomed from a loudspeaker. Stay where you are. Any sign of infection, and we will open fire. The family stood frozen, the threat of the sniper's aim a cold promise. Elijah raised his voice. We're clean, but our boy's sick. He needs help. A tense silence followed, broken only by the distant groans of the undead. Then the gates creaked open, a sliver of hope widening with each inch. Two figures in hazmat suits approached, their movements cautious but efficient. They carried scanners, the devices humming as they waved them over each family member. When they reached Alex, the scanner let out a continuous beep. One guard shook his head. He's showing signs of fever. Could be an infection. We can't let him in. Mara stepped forward, her voice firm. It's not the infection you're thinking of. He's asthmatic. He's been struggling with the dust and debris. I can treat him once we're inside. The guard hesitated, his grip on his weapon tight. Rules are rules. No exceptions. Rick interjected, the pistol now hidden but his stance unyielding. Listen, we've been through hell to get here. The kid just needs his medicine. The standoff stretched, a thin wire of tension about to snap. Then, unexpectedly, the other guard lowered his scanner. Give them a chance. We can quarantine the boy, observe him. The first guard weighed the options, the risk against the humanity he had sworn to protect. Finally, he nodded, and the gates opened wider. Follow us, and no funny business, he said, his voice muffled by the mask. The Carters and Rick walked the final steps into the safety zone, the gates closing behind them with a definitive thud. The world they knew was behind them, a whisper of the past. Ahead lay uncertainty, but also the chance to rebuild, to heal. They had breached the perimeter, but the true test of their survival was just beginning. Chapter 13. Cornered. 
The air was thick with dust and the scent of decay as Elijah and his family, along with Rick, stumbled into an abandoned building. The structure, a once proud office complex, now stood as a hollowed relic of a more civilized time. Boards creaked under their weight as they ascended the stairs, the groans of the undead echoing from below. We can't keep this up, Eli, Mara panted, her medical bag slung over her shoulder. The ammo's nearly gone, and these walls won't hold forever. Elijah wiped the sweat from his brow, his mind racing. We need a blockade. Grab whatever you can to reinforce the stairwell. Kara, her eyes scanning the dimly lit corridor, spotted a pile of broken furniture. This stuff might slow them down, she said, dragging a splintered desk across the floor. Alex, his cough subdued but still present, helped his sister, pushing chairs and filing cabinets to create a makeshift barrier. Will this really stop them? He asked, doubt lacing his words. Rick, checking the chamber of his pistol, replied, It'll give us some time to think. That's all we can ask for right now. The relentless advance of the undead sent a shiver down their spines, the sound of their hunger a constant reminder of the peril just steps away. As they fortified their position, the grim reality set in they were running out of options. Kara's mind worked furiously, her thoughts jumping from one solution to the next. An idea sparked, and she turned to the group. The rooftop. If we can get to the roof, we might be able to jump to the next building. Elijah looked up, considering the plan. It's risky. One misstep, and it's over. Mara interjected, her voice tinged with desperation. But staying here is a death sentence. We have to try something. The conversation was cut short as the first of the undead reached their barricade, hands clawing, teeth bared. They fought back, pushing the creatures away, but for each one that fell, another took its place. We need a distraction, something to draw them away from the stairs, Rick shouted over the chaos. Kara, her mind racing, remembered a trick she'd read about in an old survival manual, Molotov cocktails. We can use the alcohol from the first aid kit and some cloth as wicks. Working quickly, they assembled the crude incendiaries, the bottles, glass glinting ominously in the dim light. With a flick of a lighter, the first Molotov was ablaze, arcing through the air to explode in a burst of fire among the undead. The horde recoiled, the flames creating a temporary barrier that illuminated their grotesque forms. The family seized the moment, racing for the stairwell that led to the roof. They climbed higher, the sounds of the undead growing fainter as they approached the top. The door to the rooftop was jammed, its frame warped over time. Elijah threw his weight against it, the wood splintering with a loud crack, and they spilled out into the open air. The roof offered a precarious haven, the neighboring building a stone's throw away. They lined up, hearts pounding, the gap between life and death measured in mere feet. Kara stepped forward, her determination clear. I'll go first. Watch how I do it. With a running start, she leapt, landing with a roll on the other side. One by one, they followed, each jump a triumph over the abyss below. As they reached the safety of the neighboring building, the relief was palpable, but so too was the understanding that their journey was far from over. They had escaped the clutches of the undead, but the world beyond the rooftops remained unforgiving and wild. Their escape continued, each step a move in the grand scheme of survival, each breath a victory against the darkness. Chapter 14, Betrayal Among Us. The remnants of an old warehouse served as the evening's shelter for the weary group. The walls were lined with graffiti, a silent testament to the world's former vibrancy. Elijah, his filly's cap now more a token of the past than a shield against the sun, rummaged through their meager supplies. We're running low on food again, he said, concern etching his face. Mara, sitting cross-legged on the cold floor, replied, we need to ration what we have. No telling when we'll find more. Kara, her youthful face shadowed by the dim candlelight, interjected, we can't just keep hiding like this. We need a real plan. Alex, his cough subdued, nodded in agreement. Kara's right. We can't live meal to meal. The tension in the air was palpable, a thick fog of uncertainty that clouded their thoughts. It was Rick, the ally they had grown to trust, who shattered the fragile peace. There's a group, Rick said, his voice carrying a new edge. They've got supplies, security. I've been in contact with them. Elijah's eyes narrowed. And you're sharing this with us now? Why the secrecy? Rick's gaze didn't waver, because they want something in exchange. Something, 
or someone. Mara stood up swiftly, her locket swaying with the sudden movement. What are you saying, Rick? Kara's grip on a nearby pipe tightened. He's saying he's a traitor. Rick's jaw clenched. I did what I had to. They'll let us in, all of us, if I give them Eli. The room erupted into chaos, the betrayal a slicing knife through the fabric of their group. Elijah stepped toward Rick, his stature imposing despite his exhaustion. You think you can hand me over and they'll just welcome you with open arms? Elijah challenged. Rick's expression was one of conflict, a man torn between survival and loyalty. It's not personal, Eli. It's about making it out alive. Mara's voice was a steel blade, cutting through the air. There's no life worth living if it's built on betrayal. Kara moved like a coiled spring, releasing years of pent-up frustration and fear. She lunged at Rick, her makeshift weapon raised. No, Kara, Mara shouted, grabbing her daughter. The fight was brief, a flurry of desperation and broken trust. When it was over, Rick lay on the ground, subdued but unharmed. The choice lay before them, stark and unyielding. To stay together and face the unknown, or to split their family for the false promise of safety. Elijah, his breathing heavy from the skirmish, spoke first, his voice firm. We stick together, all of us. That's been our strength from the start. Mara nodded, her eyes meeting each of theirs. We're a family. That's how we've survived, and that's how we'll continue. Kara, her anger spent, helped Rick to his feet. But we can't trust him. Not after this. Rick, his eyes downcast, spoke softly. I, I made a mistake. I was scared. I'm sorry. The silence that followed was an uneasy truce. The bonds of their group tested to breaking point. In the end, they chose to forgive, to understand the fear that had driven one of their own to the brink of betrayal. As the night crept on, the Carters and Rick settled into an uneasy rest, the events of the day a heavy cloak upon their dreams. The warehouse, once a place of refuge, now felt like a cage, but it was one they had chosen together. Their journey was far from over, and the road ahead promised more trials, but for now they were united, their resolve unbroken. Chapter 15, The Gauntlet, in the dim light of the early morning, the Carters found themselves in a deserted parking lot, the faded lines and cracked asphalt a silent reminder of days gone by. The family, alongside Rick, stood before an old station wagon that had seen better days, its paint peeling and tires flat. Elijah peered through the dusty window, a plan forming in his mind. We need wheels, and this heap's gonna be it. Kara, her hands on her hips, surveyed the sorry sight. You're gonna get that thing running? Alex, a glint of excitement in his eyes, stepped forward. I think I can start it. I've been messing with engines for a while now. Mara shot her son a surprised look. Since when? Alex shrugged, a sheepish grin on his face. Since, well, I just picked it up, I guess. With a nod from Elijah, Alex set to work, his fingers deftly manipulating the wires beneath the steering column. The family stood guard, scanning the silent buildings surrounding them. Here goes nothing, Alex murmured and with a spark and a sputter, the engine roared to life, breaking the stillness of the morning. Mara clapped her hands. Alex, you did it. Kara hopped into the passenger seat, rolling down the window. All aboard the Carter Express. They piled in, Mara taking the back seat with Alex, while Rick jumped in beside Elijah, who took the driver's seat. The station wagon lurched forward, its engine grumbling as they headed toward the city's edge. The undead, attracted by the noise, began to emerge from the shadows, their forms staggering toward the moving vehicle. Here they come. Rick shouted, his eyes on the rearview mirror. Elijah pressed down harder on the gas pedal, the station wagon picking up speed. Hold on. The car barreled through the streets, the undead a blur of arms and snarling teeth. Some clung to the sides, their fingers scratching at the windows, leaving streaks in the grime. Kara, gripping the door handle, leaned out and swung at the clinging figures with a crowbar. Get off. One by one, the creatures fell away, but the danger was far from over. The road ahead was littered with abandoned cars and debris, a veritable obstacle course that threatened to end their escape. Elijah swerved around a toppled streetlight, his knuckles white on the steering wheel. This is insane. Mara held Alex close, her heart pounding. Just a little further, Eli. We can make it. As the car weaved through the gauntlet, a loud bang echoed from under the hood. Steam billowed out from the engine, and the car began to slow. Not now, Elijah groaned, desperation edging his voice. 
Alex leaned forward, his eyes assessing the situation. Dad, hit the brakes and turn off the engine. I think it's just overheated. Elijah did as instructed, bringing the car to a shuddering halt. The undead were closing in, a relentless tide of decay. Mara looked at Alex, her faith in her son unwavering. Can you fix it? Alex nodded, determination set in his young features. Yeah, I need just a couple of minutes. The family sprang into action, Mara and Kara taking up positions to fend off the approaching horde, while Alex worked feverishly under the hood. Elijah and Rick joined the fray, their every swing and shove a desperate bid for time. With a triumphant yell, Alex slammed the hood shut. Try it now. Elijah turned the key and the engine burst back to life, its growl a defiant cry against the chaos. They sped away, leaving the undead behind. The station wagon a flare of hope on the desolate streets. As the city limits came into view, the family shared a moment of relief, their faith in each other reaffirmed by the trial they had just endured. Kara turned to Alex, pride shining in her eyes. Who knew you were our secret weapon? Alex smiled, his earlier fear replaced with confidence. Guess I'm full of surprises. The Carters had faced the gauntlet and emerged victorious. With each other and their newfound trust in Alex's hidden talents, they pressed on, the promise of safety, a driving force behind their relentless journey. Chapter 16, The Siege of Safety Zone. Elijah's gaze was fixed on the towering gates of the safety zone, their iron bars a promise of refuge. Yet between them and safety lay a teeming mass of zombies, their groans a gruesome chorus under the darkening sky. We need a big distraction, Elijah said, his eyes scanning the desolate landscape for anything that might aid them. Mara, her hair pulled back in a functional ponytail, nodded in agreement. There's enough debris around here. If we could cause an explosion, Kara, whose quick thinking had saved them more than once, jumped in with a spark of an idea. The gas station on the corner. If we could blow the tanks. Alex, clutching a ragged teddy bear he'd found, the comfort of its presence belying the chaos around them, looked up with wide eyes. I know how we can do it. I saw it once in a book about chemistry. Elijah looked at his son, a mix of pride and fear in his eyes. All right, Alex, what's the plan? With careful instruction, Alex detailed how they could use the gas station's remaining fuel and a road flare to create a large enough blast to draw the zombies away. Rick, whose strength and military experience had proven invaluable, volunteered to set the trap. I'll go, Rick said, a grim set to his lips. You get the family ready to run as soon as you hear the boom. Elijah clapped Rick on the shoulder. Be careful, man. As Rick slipped away into the dusk, the Carters gathered their meager belongings. The moment stretched, each second a drum beat to the inevitable. Suddenly, the night lit up with an orange glow, and the explosion's roar shook the ground beneath them. Flames billowed into the sky, casting dancing shadows across the horde, which turned as one toward the spectacle. Now, Elijah shouted, and they took off towards the safety zone, the path momentarily clear. Mara kept pace with Elijah, her breaths quick and sharp. Keep going. Don't look back. Kara glanced over her shoulder, watching as Rick emerged from an alley, the horde now between him and the safety zone. He's not going to make it. Alex, his teddy bear left forgotten on the ground behind him, focused on the gates growing nearer. We can't stop. They ran, their feet pounding the cracked pavement, their path a narrowing tunnel to survival. Rick's figure grew smaller behind them, his fate a burden they would carry. The guards at the safety zone spotted them, and the gates began to open. Hurry, hurry, one guard yelled, waving them on. They slipped through the gates just as the zombies reached the perimeter, their outstretched hands inches from grasping flesh. The heavy metal clanged shut, the sound a final note to their harrowing journey. Inside the safety zone, the family collapsed, their bodies and spirits spent. The guards approached, their faces a blend of respect and sorrow. You made it, but your friend, one started, his voice trailing off. Elijah shook his head, his throat too tight to speak. Mara wrapped an arm around him, her own eyes glistening with unshed tears. Kara turned to Alex, her voice soft. He knew the risks. He did it for us. Alex nodded, the reality of their sacrifice settling in. We won't forget him. Ever. As the reality of their safety sank in, the Carters realized that their journey was not just about escape, but about the bonds they had forged along the way. They had faced the siege of the safety zone and emerged together, 
their connection deeper for the challenges they had overcome. The safety zone was not just a place. It was the beginning of a new chapter. Chapter 17, Inside the Walls. The towering gates of the safety zone closed behind the Carter family with a resounding clang, sealing them off from the nightmarish world they had navigated. Before them lay a sprawling compound buzzing with activity and life, a stark contrast to the desolation they had left behind. Two guards, their uniforms crisp and faces unreadable, stepped forward. Names and any weapons, one demanded, holding out a hand expectantly. Elijah, his cap now a relic of their arduous journey, stepped forward. Elijah Carter, and this is my family. We left our weapons at the gate. The second guard, clipboard in hand, scribbled down the details. Follow me. The council will want to speak with you. As they were escorted through the compound, they passed by clusters of tents and makeshift structures that dotted the landscape. People moved about, some hauling supplies, others tending to communal gardens, all under the watchful gaze of the safety zone's guards. Kara, her curiosity piqued, whispered to Alex, looks like they've got everything figured out here. Alex nodded, his earlier fatigue replaced by a sense of wonder. Yeah, it's like a whole new world. Mara trailed behind, her locket clasped tight in her hand, the faces of those they had lost haunting her thoughts. She felt Elijah's hand on her shoulder, grounding her. They arrived at a large building, its exterior fortified but bearing the signs of hasty construction. Inside, a woman sat behind a desk, her hair pulled back in a no-nonsense bun. She looked up as they entered. Welcome to our community, she said, her tone even. I'm Helen, the council leader. You've been through a lot to get here. Elijah, acting as the family spokesperson, replied, Thank you for letting us in. We're just looking for a chance to start over, to be safe. Helen's gaze swept over each of them, pausing on Mara. We all carry burdens. Here, we share the load. You'll be assigned duties we all contribute. Mara met Helen's gaze, a silent understanding passing between them. We're ready to do our part. Elijah, feeling the weight of his new environment, asked, And what about rules? We've been on our own for a long time. There are rules for everyone's safety, Helen explained. Curfew, rationing, defense duties. We survive because we stick together and follow the order. Kara stepped forward, the fire that had driven her through the city streets still burning in her eyes. And if we have ideas, ways to make things better? Helen smiled slightly, a hint of steel in her voice. Good ideas are always welcome, but they go through the council. We decide as a group. The meeting concluded with handshakes, though the guards' presence reminded them this was no democracy. They were shown to a tent that would serve as their temporary home, a small space with cots and the bare essentials. As night fell, the family gathered, processing the day's events. Elijah looked at each of them, his heart swelling with both pride and uncertainty. We made it, he said. But this is just the beginning. We need to find our place here. Mara, her nurse's heart yearning to heal more than just physical wounds, added, and we can't forget those we left behind. We have to help others too. Kara lay back on her cot, staring up at the canvas above her. I think we can make a difference here. We're not just survivors, we're fighters. Alex, his young face serious, chimed in. We've got a lot to learn, but we've got a lot to teach too. The family settled into their new reality, the safety zone, a fortress against the outside world, but filled with its own challenges and intricacies. They had escaped the clutches of the undead, but their journey was far from over. Here, within these walls, they would forge a new life, one that honored the past while looking boldly toward the future. Chapter 18, Resilience of Hope. The first light of dawn broke over the safety zone, casting a warm glow on the new day. The Carter family, who had endured a harrowing journey that tested their limits, now faced the challenge of forging a life within these walls. Elijah, sitting at a makeshift table outside their tent, sipped a bitter cup of coffee. I never thought we'd see a morning like this again, he said, his voice a mix of relief and weariness. Mara joined him, wrapping her hands around her own mug. It's peaceful, isn't it? But it feels strange not having to look over our shoulder every second. Kara emerged from the tent, her light brown hair tied back, and her face scrubbed clean for the first time in weeks. I'm going to help at the medical center today. They said they could use an extra pair of hands, she announced, a new sense of purpose brightening her eyes. 
Elijah nodded in approval. That's good, Kara. You've got a lot to offer. Alex, clutching a small book he'd found, took a seat beside them. What about school? Do they have one here? Mara smiled, ruffling his hair. They do, and you're going to start as soon as they're ready for new students. The conversation was interrupted by Helen, who approached with a solemn expression. We're holding a tribute for those we've lost today. We'd like you to be there. After all, you've seen more than most. The Carters agreed, understanding the importance of honoring the memory of fallen allies, including Rick, whose sacrifice had afforded them this chance at life. As the community gathered, the Carters stood side by side with their new neighbors. The silence, a shared language of loss and resilience. Names were read aloud, each a life cut short, each a story unfinished. Kara stepped forward, her voice steady as she spoke Rick's name. He saved us, not just from the undead, but from giving up hope, she said her tribute a vow to remember his courage. Elijah wrapped an arm around her shoulders as they returned to their family, a unit still whole in a world that tried to break them apart. Later at the medical center, Kara watched Mara, who moved among the patients with a healer's grace. The sight of her mother finding purpose in the chaos planted a seed in Kara's mind. Maybe, just maybe, this was where she was meant to be. In the evening, as they gathered for a meal of rationed beans and rice, the Carters talked about the future. Elijah broke the silence that had settled over them. We've been through the worst. Now we build, for us, for those we've lost. Mara nodded, her thoughts on those they had left behind, their faces etched in her heart. We carry them with us, in our actions, in the way we live. Kara shared her day's experience, a spark of enthusiasm in her voice. The medical center is understaffed but full of hope. I think I can make a difference here. Alex, his eyes on the book in his lap, added with a small smile, and I want to learn everything I can. Who knows what I can invent with the right knowledge? The Carters, their bond unbroken by the trials they had faced, looked to the horizon, where the setting sun promised the end of one day and the hope of another. Inside the safety zone, they found not just refuge, but a community, a place where their resilience could flourish and their hope could take root. As the stars began to twinkle in the night sky, the family sat together, their first day of relative peace drawing to a close. They were safe from the zombies, but the struggle for normalcy and the scars of their experience remained. Yet with each other and the memory of their journey to guide them, the Carters faced the future with determination and a newfound appreciation for the sanctuary they had found. Within these walls, they would build a new life, keeping the fires of hope alive in a world that had seen too much darkness. Thank you for listening. Subscribe now and visit our website, storywave.ai, to start creating your own generative audiobooks today. Storywave is the only true on-demand entertainment portal 